know what? Oh, I pressed the wrong <laughs> button, I'm a stupid idiot! <laughs> Welcome to Zero Hit Points, everybody. I'm Ryan Miller. It's, it's September 3rd, 2016. Welcome back to the Hotel of Love. Uh, Matt Amberg. I almost called you Adam Berg Parkin Man. Matt Amberg, Adam Parkin, back again. Gonna talk about PAX Day 2. What went wrong, what went right. Zero I, hit points. <laughs> that's, that's a good tagline. I think we should go with it, actually. I have to... This smells awful. Does it? Yeah, it's real bad. <laughs> it was worth the bit. Oh, I feel better now, though. Dude, you look better. <laughs> hey, so do we want to just talk about... Do we want to clean up some of last night? Clean it up. Do we want to get right back into let's, it? Let's I don't know. We didn't. I felt like it was such a thing last night. Did we even talk about everything we wanted to? We did more things, but also we didn't even mention that the website existed or what we might be doing there or what we hope to do for the weekend. Yeah, but no, and I think we should continue not talking about it. Okay, anymore. all right. Just <laughs> want to make sure. Just yeah. want to make sure. Zerohitpoints.com. Block list. That should be the... That's a good tagline. It's not bad. What is, yeah. is that? The, a block the, list? The, it's the, just... The just James some, Spader show? No, that, close. Close. That would be interesting. It's just him going, I don't want to... You look at this website. <laughs> 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 Internet Explorer blocked. Because, <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, James Spader's still using IE. He would make that interesting, though. No, like he you, would. That's the like, thing. The, he would do that evilly, and you'd be like, whoa. Like the Robert geez. California version would be fun, too. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I like Robert California. That's, again, that's... He could, be, he could do James it as Blaine. Spader, I don't care. Uh, th every interview with James Spader is just, hey, James Spader, what if in our series of our show, if, what if you came on and were James Spader and he for goes, a while? Yeah. <laughs> yes. And then they go, exactly. And <laughs> he shows up the next day. I love Spader. You gotta love Spader. You gotta love Spader. Hey. S Spade. -der. Speaking of loving Spader. Yeah. <laughs> also, I love Sessler. Um, last night, yes. we went to one more panel after we wrapped... And it was your favorite panel you've ever been to and yeah. ever will be to. Um, uh, you know, you, you say it in a joking manner, but you're probably right. No, not Actually, at all. it was, it so was kind of... you take care of it. it was, uh, so we went to the Friday 13th panel, uh, Gun Media. Uh, Sessler was the host. He was great. Uh, Adam Sessler. No, no, no. They, they know who Sessler is. You have the same name as you. Mm. Oh! Clever. Wait, right? wait. Yeah. They didn't mention it at the, at the panel. I can't believe... That's so sad. But he was just moderating. He yeah, he was a moderator and he was he was great. He actually it was really funny because a lot of times you get moderators who 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 go out of their way to say, I know nobody cares about me, but then they end up taking over the show a little too much. And yeah. he was awesome that, in that respect. And he always is. But I think Pax is pretty good about that, generally speaking. But like, for the I most haven't part, seen that yeah. happen for a while. It, 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 true. But, but, but it, was, it was nice, again, to see. I, I, love, I like Adam Sessler. I think he's he's a really fun personality and uh, and he did a great job letting Everybody else take the stage, you know, and uh, and so uh, Randy Greenback was there, Tom Savini was there, uh, and then uh, two of the other gents, three of the other gents uh, from uh, Gun Media and Ilphonics uh, that were they're working on the game. One of them was the um, the creative director, I think, and the other guys were working on the uh, the animation stuff, the kills for uh, with Tom Savini. Hey. Who's Tom Savini? Tom Savini is the makeup effect artist who did all the makeup work for the first Friday the 13th film. He worked on the fourth film. He worked on Dawn of the Dead. He directed the Night of the Living Dead remake. He's big in horror. He was He's the Sultan of Splatter. He's, That's, it's a great... It's a, it's a real fun name. He's, he's good with that. Where did he go after the first movie? He all sorts of places. He, he's been... Yeah, That's why I'm... I'm he's, I, don't, I don't remember. Maniac was... I don't remember they if that was prior or just... talked a little bit about Maniac. Too. Yeah, and Maniac has this real storied history of, of how hard that movie was to make, and Joe Spinell, who Tom Savini knew, is the, he, the, Spinell was the main, uh, the guy who wrote it, directed it, or, or he didn't direct it, but he wrote it and was the star of it, and he died very young and uh, very early on, and, and he was promising. It was it, really weird stuff. Uh, but he, he's done a ton of things. It, the thing that most people would recognize him from is from Dust Till Dawn. He was Sex Machine with the cock gun. As he liked to refer to, it. and he just told us that Wait, last year he Savini got that back. himself, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's what yeah. I thought. Okay. He he's, he he usually was for for the first half of his career mostly behind the camera with the occasional um, 
on screen. Yeah, I was just curious because I feel like he he must have made a name for himself with the first Friday the Thirteenth, so maybe that's why he went he on was, to other he stuff. He was or... no, he was he was already a name before that because he he had worked on Dawn of the Dead before that, and oh. he had worked on a couple of other movies okay. before All that. Right, okay. um, Friday the Thirteenth was was just it was one in a long list of of he was one of the 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 few guys. Um, uh, well, that makes more sense. It wasn't like he was gonna probably stick around. Like he had any special ties to that franchise. Per no, se. no. He 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 was he was just uh, just a fantastic makeup guy. Still is. Yeah. Um, but huge deal. The big the big deal for me was meeting Tom Savini, and, and I did get a chance to meet Tom Savini well, so after the, way, the thing. But the, the the interesting part for me was how that translates into what he's doing for this game now. Because mm-hmm. I mean, naturally, you wouldn't think. At first, hearing about it, and and I'm maybe a little more more removed from this game than you are. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's 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 definitely not your. There were so many big names. You know, I was like, okay, they, they're getting. That's really cool that they're getting these guys behind it. But yeah. what does that mean, especially a practical effects guy? Like, what what does that mean for him? Yeah, it sounds like his main role is designing the kills. Yeah, yeah, and so yeah. so they the uh, the the video that they put out last night um, that they showed <clears throat> they premiered here, Pax Prime. Prax Pride. Yeah, Prax. They, they Prax, changed it again. Pax Prax. Prax. Now Pride. it's Prax. Prax. Uh, the video they showed last night, though, was the uh, um, the the kill the kill video that they uh, they showed uh, thirteen, I think, and some of them were just real gory, real uh, fun. Probably. They probably showed thirteen. You think? Maybe. The song. I didn't the, the song, know, but the now song that you mention it. The song that was in the video was called Thirteen. Oh, was it? Yeah. It was by a Finnish, Swedish. Swedish. I think they were a Swedish, Swedish hair metal band. Hair revival band, yeah. yeah. Or, or I guess not a revival. They probably hair, hair, just hair, metal, hair metal, metal probably just moved to Sweden and has been there ever since. Right? It's. It, it, I think it's fair. Okay. <clears throat> Hot licks or something like Hot that. Hot licks. That's right. Yeah, actually, wow. yeah, nice. that's it. Okay, thank you. Um, so they they showed the video. Uh, you, you can. You just paid for your trip to Pax. There it was. Yay. <laughs> I like how he looked at the camera. Yay! <laughs> no, it's play to the camera. Yeah, play to the camera. So, how are you? Uh, <laughs> so the video, the the video was cool. Uh, it showed a bunch of different kills, and and one of the things that I was actually very concerned with, and and I knew I shouldn't have been, but early on they showed a short video of one of the first kills that they were that they had animated. And it was Jason smashing a girl's head. It was in, like their into a first. Door. We talked about it on the cast. Yeah, it, it was, was like their first gameplay. Trailer the first thing we ever like saw, and uh, and I was really disappointed with how it looked because there was no destruction of the model. Like it was just like he. It just yeah, it looked flat. Like it, the idea was there. There was no impact. It was just like he yeah. he, he pressed his. I mean, you knew yeah. the sound effects and whatever. You knew right. that he killed her. But you didn't see like I don't know if you even saw any blood splatter. Or I think like there was that. some blood, but it was like very very minimal. Yeah. Amount. But so but, yeah, I remember us talking about that. And, and, it, and it was it was a little bit of a, a concern because the gore is part of it. Do not be concerned. Not even <laughs> a tiny bit like that. Everything Tom Savini said, everything the animators said, everything Randy Greenback, who's the 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 guy doing this, he's he's the executive director, what have you. Um, everything they said was right. Everything they showed was right, and 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 the cool thing is, yeah, they, they bring this back to the original point of Savini, a practical effects guy, being involved in this. He's his his involvement is creating the kills. He's got a huge list of them, and in his pocket, in his like, pocket, yeah. Like and the, the, the executive pages. dude got like nervous for a second too. He's like, like no, no, away, you, can't, you can't talk yeah, about those. Don't, don't <laughs> like literally nervous, like a couple times during that panel too. Like you could tell he was like they were a little itchy. You yeah. can't talk like don't. I don't know if you're supposed to. And uh, and so, and so he it, it was kind of cool because they talked about the mocap stuff because they brought in Kane Hodder who is the most recognizable of the Jason characters. The guy is just a beast. He's a huge mountain of a man. And so they talked about the difference between the practicality of the effects and why it works better in a video game, or, and why it's different in a video game because with the film, you know, all the editing, you can that was fascinating. You, yeah, you yeah, never yeah. really considered it that that oh. that that with all the editing and stuff. You're you're only seeing what the director and the editor and the effects guy even wants you to see. Like you can't see when somebody's standing there, blood squirting out of their neck. You don't see the guy behind him with a with a pump just squeezing the blood out. Yeah. You know, it's you. And fir- their words were like, "You think you've seen all these kills when really you haven't 
you ever seen them. Yeah, you, you don't see hardly anything. Yeah. You see it. You see a flash. Which is great. Like that's the, the beauty of editing in a way. Like that's absolutely still yeah. you know you it's you hide a little bit. You you keep a little yeah. mystery to it. Exactly. You let let it's always better to let your mind wander because it's going to go to a way more right. demented place than what's being shown. Also for practical reasons. Oh uh, yeah, of course. But that that there was it's that's a cool give and take. Yeah. That you absolutely don't have here. Like yeah. it's all and, you're in the game now. And 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 that was what what they brought up. They talked about how how. With the practical effects, you see only what they want. But with this, you can't do that. They can't fake it. They have to show the impact. They have to show. They have to be able to show it from every angle. Because if, if like they said, if the other five counselors or six counselors are all standing around Jason while he's bashing somebody to death, if it's only two dimensional, it doesn't work. Like you have to be able to see it from every side. And it was really cool. And and uh, the the little bits of of I mean that 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 whole panel was strictly about. Big, how killing works it was it was it was very much so they knew they were playing to the they brought tom savini and they brought him because they knew at least a handful of those people were gonna bring friends because they gotta see tom savini it was really cool yeah it was cool and it was great and uh and of course the highlight for me was tom savini is a big deal in in my life Uh, there's a lot of sentimentality to the work he's done and it's funny to say dawn of the dead is sentimental and his reaction when I told him that was, what? <laughs> like, there was un... Uh, uh, Please stop touching me. There's no reason to grab my clothing while you tell me. <laughs> yeah, and I'm just like shaking it. I'm like, do you understand, Tom? <laughs> Listen to me. Sentimental. And, uh, but I got to tell him uh, how my father kind of brought horror movies to me because they were fun for him. And one of the, the, his favorite horror movie was Dawn of the Dead. And it was because of Tom Savini, not just the character, but because of the the gore effects and the splatter and all the weird stuff that floated throughout that movie that Savini had his hands in. And my dad's, the, 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 the story that I got to tell him in a very brief thing was my, my father was, uh, uh, he used to run a theater. And so he, he was the manager and he, 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 his favorite story to tell was that he had the one movie was Dawn of the Dead where he actually had to clean up vomit because somebody got sick in the theater. Oh, that's good. From the movie, like they they and because they complained to him and demanded their money back, and that and like and he was like that is just tremendous. Like my father was just so so happy about that and and telling Tom Savini that and 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 you know relating that story to him and 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 just being able to say thank you was fantastic. That made packs for me. So it's all downhill from here yep. just trash bags Speaking over the which, head <laughs> or hair why did you get that bag on your head where did it come from what was the yes. first thing okay so i guess the first thing we did was you were like let's go check out toe jam and earl maybe we can get there soonish today's saturday yes. i don't know if you guys know this but saturday is a, that a weekend it's a day people don't work mostly uh, they go to pax they do lots and so we went to Toe Jam, and on the way up, I was like, man, you go to Toe Jam, I'll go to Star Trek Bridge Crew. Yeah. Because we went there yesterday, and they were like, for the VR stuff, it seems like you have to set an appointment, obviously, because they can't move people through the lines that quickly. Which is unbelievable. Um, <laughs> it's so just I, an experience. Yesterday <laughs> I went, and there was no line, but there was also no more appointments to set. So he's like, come in the morning, we'll set them for the day. And I was like, okay. So I don't know why I didn't think there wouldn't be a line I don't know why. Uh, yeah, so I was like, yeah, you go to Toe Jam. I'll go to this non-line place. So then I go Where you to just sign a name. Yeah, and there was a, a big line. So I said, oh, I'll go to Toe Jam and Earl. And then I beat you to Toe Jam and Earl. And I said, hey, let's go. And then Toe Jam and Earl was like <laughs> two, two hours. Two hour yeah, so, uh, <laughs> we were just and, and, and here's the thing. I love Toe Jam and Earl. It's a game I've pre-ordered. I, I backed it on Kickstarter, so I'm getting the well, game. Well, that's actually another thing we did yesterday, too. You talked to... I talked to, to Greg, the guy who created the game, which was, that was very cool. He was is a super sweet guy. Just, he's a, and a mate, like sweet is the perfect word. Yeah, for it, him. he he is he is just he was there was there is no other word. He was just sweet. Nice and, guy. Yeah, even the we talked to the guy who's doing the music for the new Toe Jam. Yeah, and Cody Earl, Cody Wright. And he said kind soul like five times yeah. during that conversation. And and Cody Wright, the guy who's doing the music, is uh, also fantastic. Like I bumped into him a bunch of times, and he's been walking around behind a big Earl uh, yes. that you can take pictures with, and he's walking around with uh, the other guy. Um, who's doing the keyboards for the mu- the music in the, the didn't thing. do the original music? But Correct. Apparently saw the new one coming out and contacted his, Greg yeah. as 
quickly as possible and said, I am your guy. Like, yeah. And he was correct. And No, and, and the, this this guy, uh, Cody, is an amazing yeah, bass good. player. And he's walking yeah. around playing the Toe Jam and Earl theme song behind him, and it's super fun. It's, it's one of the better... I don't know uh, attractions it's, going on. Yeah, right now. it's yeah, it's, just it's Earl walking around with bang, 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 and 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 one of bang, bang, one of the greatest bang. things about that one of the, the the brilliant parts of it is Toe Jam and Earl. So, so something Greg actually relayed to us was was he didn't really know if he should do this because Toe Jam and Earl was such a unique property and it's so old that is that going to work now? And and he was surprised by the outpouring of, of, of support for it. The crowd, what did they crowdfund? Was it a Kickstarter? It was a Kickstarter, yeah. yeah. I don't remember what the, the, I don't remember how far up it went. It's been so Far long enough, now. like, he found out in the process, which is what Kickstarter yeah. has become good for as well. Is, Absolutely. Is, is this something we should do? Yeah. Here's my yes money. Oh. Good. Yeah. And it's, it, I don't know. So it, is this something we should do? Never mind. All right, good. <laughs> uh, Don't ask questions. But the you already know the answer. I that's good. We're 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 going there. Thank you, Magneto. <laughs> uh, you can call me Professor Sex. I don't know anything about it. I'm, I'm not, still not, like you ask me that thirty times a day, and it's not going to stick. I know. You don't come up with your own nicknames. They happen. Now. Okay, Magneto. Captain Boner. <laughs> uh, but but I love that he's walking around because it, it's one of those things where where yeah, Kickstarters. There's so many of them that that. I don't know. About, I don't know if it's this way for you, but for me, I'm almost blind to them. Like it has to be something just really, really attention getting to me for me to go. Like Toe Jam and Earl is one that for me, I'm like, Neh. but there are a lot of people that that you don't do that. Contributed to the Toe Jam and Earl one, right? Yeah. You, oh yeah. You yeah, backed yeah. it. That's I did. I backed it. I've got I've got the T-shirt. I got the action figures and everything. Yeah, of course. Okay. Don't be ridiculous. You're uh, no. You're I, a boner. Anyway, so that wraps up yesterday. Yes, but so. That, well, that wraps up yesterday and today with Toe Jam Earl because yeah, we went well, up there and said, this morning. we're not going to play. And now the reason I said I'm not worried about playing because I'm already getting the game. I know I'm going to love the game. More than anything, the only reason I actually wanted to play it was because it's split screen multiplayer and I kind of wanted you to play it because you've never played. Yeah, no, that it, it's a good opportunity. It, and it's still It's might still happen. an opportunity. Yeah, it's just, we're, we, we were, Monday is the opposite of right. Saturday. Yeah. So yeah. we should have a lot of time to clean stuff up. Correct. Monday. Correct. Uh, but we did what we did end up doing where they gave you the fancy headgear, or the fancy headgear on top yeah. of your fancy headgear. Yeah. So a uh, friend of the show, uh, Khalif Adams, he does a show called Spawn on Me. Check it out. It's an amazing podcast. Um, he was helping out at the booth uh, doing this haptic feedback stuff, and um, and it's it was like a head. Gear, it was like, like a, a it was almost a headband, cap. yeah. yeah. A, a, yam, a really big yarmulke. It, it was oversized Man. yarmulke. That's Do why I, I have some branding ideas. That is why me. I felt comfortable. Okay. Yeah. So, so you, so, so <laughs> if it was just a haptic, a uh, so, haptic so it's, a, it's got like a yeah. <laughs> haptic, you're, yeah. you're only gonna feel it from the back. <laughs> so, so, so. Um, yeah, so we, we put these on because it was it was it was a uh, it's an early days thing. It's an early demo version. It's not this is not the final product. No. Uh, but haptic feedback for anybody who doesn't understand or know it is is actually f- getting a feeling where you're where you where you have feelings. <laughs> like, a sensory. So the way this one specifically <laughs> was set up, which we're took doing me a, a bang second. up job, Khalif. Well, okay, so imagine. Be proud. <laughs> imagine your controller. Your controller has. Haptic vibration sensory things that only recently, I would say, with the latest console generation, I guess I don't, they might have been doing this on PCs for a year. Adam, do you know? He doesn't know. He doesn't know. Why um, would he? Why <coughs> would he? That's the best part I of the question. Before I finish the question, that's how you do it. <laughs> don't ever make that face of me. Um, <laughs> you want me to put the hat back They on? vibrate in different spots depending on like what they want to communicate. So this thing, right. and it took me a bit to understand what they were trying to communicate with this. I was playing a Doom type game. Right. Or a Quake type game, I guess would be more accurate. Because that's what he said. Yes. And <laughs> it took me a while to realize that the vibration going on, because it kept vibrating, like especially in the front, what had to do with where all the action was happening. Right, yeah. So, exactly. so it was yours the same? Yeah, so, okay. so the thing that I was playing was, it was like a... Um, a a sniper demo thing where, where you had targets that were popping up and, and you just moved the mouse around. So the first one was just finding the targets in general, just looking for them. The second one was using vision and the haptic. So the a timer would pop up and I'd have a few seconds to like it would like five seconds to 
feel the feedback to know exactly where to turn to quickly mm. find the thing. And then the last part was no vision. Like, it was the same thing. It's not black. It was just oh, like uh, it was like a, like a foggy forest. So you couldn't see the target anymore, but you could feel the haptic feedback. So you, so you huh. knew where it was. See, that's cool. I wish I would have got yours. I mean, you can still. Mine we, was cool we can go too, do it again. But, yeah, <laughs> when will we find the time? When will we find <laughs> the time? Um, Gee, what time is it? it it's it, it was it early might, on. It but, might uh, be time. Promising, cool. I think Sleep. the thing about that as well is that it's way more accessible. Like the the, yes, the sort of yeah. weird haptic stuff you hear about there is like full body suits or. Even like you know power glove type stuff, well, which I guess is maybe they do the haptic. They do the haptic feedback with uh, uh, the Steam controllers. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, yeah. that's true. Also, yeah. And that, and that's, but this is like small enough that I feel yeah. like is a viable accessory, kind of in that way. But. Yeah, and it, and it, and and he he the the guy who created it actually asked us. He was like, "What would you think about something like this for Counter Strike?" And it, I could totally see it being very cool for something like that. I don't know that it would ever be. Like it's not something you'd ever see in like a tournament, you know. It's it's not something that that would happen there. But I could totally see people having a lot of fun playing Counter Strike without you get a you get a land full of people or, or people that, a bunch of people have it because it, it the the way he had described it and it's the perfect description is it's Spidey Sense. It's yeah, like it's it's cool exactly idea. what I imagine his Spidey which Sense was. Would also be a cool application. Absolutely, like, which we literally talked about playing a Spider Man yeah. game. Yeah, but you you like, feel buzz. you feel the buzz and it's it's just kind of like when they when he mentioned that. That's all I could think about. Was it was yeah, Spider-Man. Well, that and like if they find the spot on the brain that they can vibrate, that just makes the player evacuate themselves like, immediately. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> anyways, um, that was the other thing we could. So haptic evacuation. So thank you, uh, Khalif. For, yes, definitely. You're Khalif awesome for helping us. We out. love you. Or not helping us out, but yeah, having us over or whatever. Yeah, thanks for having us over. We appreciate it. Because dinner also, was wonderful. <laughs> You have a lovely home. He pointed us in the direction of Church in the Darkness. Which, my god, that's just... This game is just so up my alley. It's ridiculous. It was an obvious, like... Very... I mean... <laughs> obviously was up here. Yeah, when Khalif says... Good recommendation, but super easy. Like, you know... Yeah, like, the, yeah, the, yeah the, this is... Hey... <laughs> Watch a horror movie. Okay! Yeah. You know, like, it's, it's a I've no-brainer. i got this thing that Tom Savini did. Yeah, I'm done. In. You know? You might like it. I will love it. But Tom Savini did not do this game. In fact... He didn't. Um, you met the dude who did it, though, later on. I did, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was super nice. And at the panel we'll talk about, I guess, in the future. But this yes. game itself, you uh, played it, I watched. You, and and, and <laughs> I, I now understand something that I missed significantly during the demo, which probably would have... Um, Adam did stuff too. Placated your thing, by the way. Your, your issue with the game. Your, your your issue with the game. Well, say so. Do your so, thing, and then so here's so here's the, the the premise of this game is just utterly ridiculous. Premise is cool. It's in the mid seventies. <laughs> you your family went to South America with a cult, and so think Jonestown, and now you're going to the cult to where the cult has built their their plantation. Thing what I, plantation is not the right word a I guess compound a compound there is that's mm. a compound uh, the compound uh, and you're sneaking into the compound to find your family and figure out if they want to actually get out of the cult it's a top down isometric uh, kind of a pseudo twin stick shooter it's not like it's not twin stick in the sense that like you press up and you shoot it's, from what you described to me the controls are exactly the same as uh, Laura Croft Laura Croft thank you. And the Guardian of Light? Did you ever play that? Oh, no, I never did. Okay. I, and so I, never yeah, you, I think you left trigger to lock, and, but then you still yeah. stick shit yes. somehow or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like so you left trigger brings up like your, your reticle, and your reticle has a certain distance based on whatever gun so you have. So you're not just running around twin sticking right. the whole thing. Right. And, and, and it, it was cool. Like the, the aesthetic of the game was cool. It, it's, a, it's a static map, but the people that are in the map are, never in, are not placed in the same spot. So gameplay is going to be a little different every time. Uh, it stealth is it's a viable option. You don't have to actually go in. I you know we're talking about shooting people, but you don't actually have to do it. You can you can kind of stealth around. You have uh, you have a minor ability to kind of see the vision cones when you press a button, but you can't move when you're doing that. So or you move very very slowly, uh, but you can see where they can see. And and so the idea to 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 to, to you have missions to find items to try and talk to people. 
it's just really cool. Like it's a, it's a great idea, and that the opening bit was cool. Like the opening lines, you can you can read into so many different cults that they are pulling from, like all these weird little ideas, and uh, and so the game was super fun. I really enjoyed it. There were a couple of things that the 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 aiming and locking on that didn't feel as strong as it could. It didn't feel quite as tight, you know. Like it was. I don't know if it's sluggish. I don't know what that was. I remember even with Lara Croft, like... But... Did I do it? Yeah, yeah, you're good. Um, That's why I didn't jump out of It took me a while to get used to those controls. Like, there, once they did, and once you got the Z-targeting or whatever, you like the locking on. Yeah, yeah. Because you could lock on and then kind of jump, which I guess is Lara Croft anyways. But after a bit, it was fine, but I remember a little bit of shock at first, you know. Yeah, and and, and it's, I mean, I've played games like this before. I just, it, 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 like I said, it just didn't feel quite tight enough. It's, it's right there. And the game is still, like, way early development. Like, this isn't coming out until next year or something. Yeah, 2017. Yeah, so it's, not a and my only issue is barely an issue really because it's it comes down to taste and mm-hmm. yeah i could and i also could you made a good point i couldn't hear what was going on yeah and that but the 70s aesthetic seemed a little bit underdone like i i wouldn't if he hadn't have said that i never would have known looking at the game and, and, and you know it's hard to say yeah. like a 70s filter or like more 70s items like would it, be I, cool I, because that's completely you know yeah, and, and we talked about that, and I, I think I, I, I think like a little bit of a grain to it would probably that would probably pump pump that up a little bit. I don't. I so the thing is with that that like I guess I just kind of have to ignore that it's in the seventies because that top down isometric thing you're not really seeing a ton either. Like the the, the models aren't you know you're, you're not, not real close. You're not seeing a full right. model. You're seeing like kind of the top of the model, and and so you you kind of like. I can't. America's top model? No, God no! Oh, it's South America. America's top model because <laughs> they, they moved to South America. I told you that in the beginning. I'm sorry. It's okay. For everything. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> See the side eye? I'm in trouble after this. Also involved in this game. Dirty trouble. We, we went. We went to another panel after that, yeah. but uh, it, it's um. Bear. Pat Bear's uh, 404 in it panel. He has a site out super, there. Super fun. Check it out. I yeah. believe all the videos they shared are going to be there as well. And this site, or this uh, and panel I... this year was kind of firing on all cylinders. Like, every one of those videos was yeah. pretty great. Some good uh, noodle videos. I can honestly Japan. say I have <laughs> never wanted noodles more in my we life than after that. Damn. Yes. Every one of us was like, dude, oh my gosh. I, I, and not good noodles, cup of noodles. Because the com- they were... Cup awesome commercial. Cup noodles are good noodles. I'm sorry. There's you should be. It, rice noodles are not my favorite. Every literally everything else. Mm. If I were failing, you like that? There's no. It's not. It's not. A, they're all good noodles. Mm. Yaki all good noodles. Yeah. Udon. 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 I am now. Me don. Um, Him don. So go check that out. But related Panadon. to Church in the <laughs> Darkness is uh, after that we ended up at a panel. Yeah. Uh, called the Dark Arts of Voice Acting or something like that. Adam. Yes? <laughs> Did you want to add anything to what we've said so far? Eh. I feel... I'm so used to him being the only one here. We love you. Oh, what's, that's what's, so sweet. What's the Canadian take? <laughs> <laughs> Trudeau, go! Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Just wait. Okay, the so apology's <laughs> coming. <laughs> <laughs> I almost did it. <laughs> If you okay. don't have an actual Canadian take, that's fine. Yeah, no, I mean, like, we, so we went to the panel that was the, the dark arts of voice acting or whatever it was. And oh, Ellen I meant on what, anything yeah, we anything, set up. Yeah, so anything, I feel like I've left well, you all out. that stuff I wasn't really present for because I was busy trying to find a toy for my kid. And ah, for whatever reason, there's yeah. nothing. There is nothing this year, nothing. man. No, yeah. we haven't got a single shirt yet. Yeah, it's it's been Again, really this, slim pickings the, the, this year. The preface, the don't be entitled or jerks or whatever, but... Not it's a, a single it's, shirt. Look, it's a simple marketing tool <laughs> that everybody really enjoys. And it's not that we owe, we're we owed them or we deserve them. It's we want them and we're annoyed we can't have them because nobody's giving them to us. The, the plus side, the non-entitlement side of this is PAX has always been fan-centered. And you come to PAX because you want to feel special that you belong yeah. to this game in a way that is a little bit more special. And, you know, having a piece of identity to, to wear on yourself is... Is part of that, you know? and that's actually you know what? That's a really goddamn good way of putting it. 
it, it is. It, it's the identity. That's you. you're really smart. Okay. You're a very good podcaster. That's why I, make I think money. you're a very good podcaster. <laughs> I feel dirty. Yeah. You want to um, go wash it off? I'll go with you. I can help. But we did. I'll scrub your back. We ended up at the voice acting panel, and <laughs> sure enough, I'm bad. Um, the guy that was moderating was the guy. Do you remember his name? I don't. Ten four. Richard something. I texted it to you. you oh did. wait, my phone does work. All phones work all the time. Mm. His name doing this. was definitely. You're not gonna believe this. Do you remember it? Any guesses? Richard something. You're that Richard Rouse. Richard right. Roper. It was worth it. Ebert. Um, was the moderator. Also, we were there because Ellen McClain... <laughs> also, we were there. Not on the panel. We were just That's there. That's the first part of a sentence. We were there because Ellen McClain and husband... John Patrick Lowry. John Patrick Lowry. Ellen McClain, the voice of Gladys from Portal. Gladys? Gladys. Gladys? What did I say? Gladys. <laughs> did I say... Yeah, like, I tried like, to say... I tried to say... Well, because I don't... If I'm not paying attention... Oh, Gladys! Uh, Damn you! Hey, that's the joke, though, right? Because it kind of sounds like the name Gladys. Yeah, it does. But But I try to say GLaDOS, you're right. But I also don't want to say GLaDOS, because I feel like I hear GLaDOS more than anything, and that's not it. GLaDOS. I say GLaDOS. 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 Well, yeah, exactly. I don't want to sound like you. Like, I know video games. Um, I've never, ever said that. (laughs) It's true. I know video games. Now I have. You've only admitted to being horrible at it. Um, I invented them. Uh, her husband, Lowry, does the voice of the sniper. Yes. In TF2. In TF2. And the voice of Adam Jensen was there from Human Revolution and Mankind Divided. And the voice of the narrator from Bastion, as well as his uh, yeah. boss or co-worker Logan, from... Logan something or other was the voice, and then Darren Corp yes. was the other guy there. His handler. His uh, handler. From, uh, Making sure he doesn't... Super Giant Games? Yeah. Right? yeah. Making sure he doesn't say too much with that, that golden voice Logan has. So that was awesome. Like, honestly, that panel is kind of just like, everybody says lines and the voices that they do, and it's, and it's cool, and yeah, and then... I, I, I do want to say, I was actually kind of surprised at how, what that panel became. I, for, I, for some reason, I didn't think it was going to be that. Like, I, I knew that was going to happen. Well, we, did you not go with us last year? No, I guess okay. I thought it was just going to be more technical about it, and I was no, kind of surprised that it wasn't. It's pretty much a fan. It was cool. No, it was super cool. Like, No, well, this time, awesome. this time was it. even better, because after that kind of stuff, which is still fun and awesome. Like, yeah, no, it was great. Um, Gladys and the Sniper sang a song together mm-hmm. that's going in this Church in the Darkness game, yeah. because they do the voices of the cult leaders. It's a husband-wife team. And the song itself, I guess it plays over the credits, which yeah. I feel bad anytime they hire these people, they're like, let's make a song for the credits because a portal or something like that. Because the song itself was really evocative and cool. Yeah, and it was a yeah. beautiful song. Like, it was. I would have loved to see that. I hope it's in the game somewhere and, and is used I, 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 I to won't, that end. I won't be surprised if, uh, if that's actually put out on the soundtrack, too. Uh, you'll, I'll, yeah, definitely. But, but, but the thing to... Uh, played on the guitar yeah, yeah. and sung by Lowry. And, and yes, that's right. Ellen and, and McClain. Gladys, yeah, yes. they, they they both sang the song. And beautifully, like yeah, it was great. Good stuff. That so that's how that <laughs> went with. It was good. We enjoyed it. Thank you for Remember coming that. to Zero Hit Point. And we did go out on the floor a little bit more. Um, we kind of we had some downtime, so we were kind of looking for stuff here and there. But yeah, we ended up going. To the, I don't know if you're building up or if this is just going to be okay. No, it's fine. No, I'm, dude, I'm nothing. Um, I'm just here for you. We checked on ReCore. I'm I'm really Which, interested in ReCore just because it's a forty dollar game that looks fairly <laughs> solid. No, the number one again, reason. Number one again, reason. It's there's a sentence after. No, no, no. It's not that there's a sentence after. It's that you could have put that reasoning anywhere else, and it would have been. Like, okay, that's well, a cool point. But you start off with the, it's $40, and also somebody, whatever, video games. I use $40 game in terms of time, actually. It, 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 I'm literally just <laughs> that saying is a reasonable because statement. it's a shorter game. That is a reasonable statement that I completely understand. Oh, okay. Seriously, come up to me nowadays and say, hey, we're thinking about making a short game. And then I'll be like... <laughs> yeah, Go I'm, I'm thinking about <laughs> buying a short game, and I would like some help with my short game but because I'm not a very good golfer. Also, it looks solid, and I've heard 
solid things about it. So I, I'm interested to get my hands on it a little bit before it comes out. We went and tried to do that, but that was a two-hour line. Um, we tried the same thing with For Honor, because that kind of the same thing. Yeah, that, that was We knew that was going to be it. Yeah, that's... Did if you, you had to pick... I mean, it's hard to tell because Ubisoft kind of makes all their games, the big game yeah, it packs. Hold on But for a if you had to pick one... Just oh, time out. I'm sorry. Just, yeah, thank you. Well, you didn't do the hand signal to right then. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Did, I, did did, I, did, I forgot to Zach Morris yeah, you. Yeah, come on. Time out. <laughs> uh, There's two things I understand. Zach Morris and sports, that, for anybody who knows me. Those are t- you know, right. you're, you're not wrong. So, so anyway. <laughs> you timed me out. Did, oh, you have no, to time me back in. It was, uh, okay, no, so I was curious. Do you actually, is Recore something that you're interested in? Kind of. I mean, the trailers would look kind of cool. Because yeah, it just is not doing anything for me. Like, I I like the pedigree behind it. I yeah, just yeah. don't have any interest in it. It doesn't look... I don't know. When you say pedigree. The dog food. Are you talking about Inafune? Uh-huh. So Inafune is on it, but it's being made by the gosh dang it. The gosh dang it. Mm-hmm. The people who are making the game, what they've made before, is actually more interesting to me than Inafune. Because I, f- I think he's only gosh, kind of tangentially involved. I'm sorry. Continue your thought. No, I, but I was asking him. That was what okay. I wanted to know. I wanted Continue to know your if... thought of his thought. I answered. Dang it. I don't think you understand how to podcast. I don't know how to podcast. Then what did we do? What I I honestly don't Not know podcast. anymore. Talk about something while I look up what else they made. Okay. What'd you do? Because <laughs> I don't remember what we did. We went to another panel. We walked around, putzed around, did nothing. We, we actually, that was the point where we started looking for uh, stuffed animals and couldn't find anything mm. for his kids. Go on. He's just going to look up pornography. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what did yeah, you, what did you go do? I'm just Pornography. That was when I went to my friend for lunch. <laughs> okay, so tell me so. about that. What did you eat? <laughs> I had a turkey sandwich. Mm. Where did you have that? Uh, six arms. Did it have a uh, toothpick in it that had anything on it? There's toothpick in it, but there's nothing on the toothpick. No, t- nothing on the toothpick. Did you have a beverage? And what was said beverage? Water. So no beer. The Canadian no beer. doesn't drink the beer. No, now, he, do. You do drink the beer. You I just do drink didn't drink the beer, the beer then. I know yeah, that. That's correct. Okay. And then after you finished eating your turkey sandwich, what was on the side? Fries? Fries. Okay. You didn't get the Cajun tots, and so I'm a little no, disappointed. I didn't. Yeah, always go tot, never go fry. Yes, we, we actually discussed that at lunch. The, today? Or yeah. because no, today. I, we've had this conversation, I think, multiple times in the past. Because the people I went with, it was a you know, husband and wife, and he got fries, and she got the tots, and they discussed whether or not fries or tots. And I think by the end of that conversation, we all agreed that tots are the way to go. Yeah, you go tots because it's a rarely uh, food found. Mm. That's that's the reasoning. Because you can get fries everywhere, but tots. Ooh. Yeah, so. It's and we're back! <laughs> Couldn't find it. So, okay. John, so, so, okay. that's the food review section. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, so when, you, when you finished your turkey sandwich and you, you, you parted ways with your friends and you walked back down the hill, what did you do? Went to that. That was when I went to the, you, the video, you came to the, the panel. voice panel. Okay. So we're all um, caught up. Yes. Now we're See, together again. Now we're complete. And then the last thing we did today, right before we came here, in fact, was the Cards Against Humanity yeah. giant bomb panel. You didn't. I did not. So I'm going to go ahead and step off and have a great show. Oh, put your clothes back on. Why every... Hey, that panel was just fine. Those people know how to entertain. The cards people do, yeah. The, the giant bomb. Okay, the giant so bomb yeah. panel was really not giant bomby this year. They even so. It, Cards Against Humanity, Max Tempkin. The first half was kind of that. It was a little mixed, but it was an hour and a half, so the first 45 was pretty much that. And yes, they do very good set pieces. Like they are entertainers. Like they're 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 funny. Yeah. They're funny yeah. people. I'm also I'm I like the giant bomb crew. I listen to the cast, whatever. But yes, they're much more of a maybe an improv type. Are you gonna come back or not? No. I think it's miraculous you didn't knock over the camera. Dude, I have I have deft with my acrobatic abilities. Spry. Is You're the deft. word that I used to describe you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> I'm a spry guy. <laughs> but yeah, so sometimes sometimes giant bomb doesn't exactly. So did they did they not? 
like, so last year I went. Hard act to follow and maybe a different comedy style that didn't yeah. quite match. But so I, still last year. It's still fun. Like, if the only thing we have to compare it to, I would think, would be maybe the Gearbox panel. Because it's kind of the same thing. It was also in the main theater. Like, it was Hall. an actual production. Yeah. Like, it's not just, it's not a typical panel. Like, it, it is an actual production. Like, there's other things yeah. going on. S- st- still better than Gearbox, probably. Wow, that's a ringing endorsement. But, but good. You seem to have a question. Well, no, I, I, my frame of reference, like I, I've listened to the Bombcast and and you know Giant Bomb. I, I'm not like diehard into it. I'm familiar enough. So last year was the only time I've I've seen the panel, and it was it was funny. It was really good. I remember mm-hmm. we had a really good time with it. Um, what was different? Like was it was it was it, it if, basically just split down the middle? The first it, half was cards, the last half was done. So no, but I mean for them, what was would it have worked better? Would would you guys have enjoyed it more if Bomb was first and then followed by Temkin? Like would that have made possibly their bits like funnier? I said, but following the cards who had a really good showing, really good like, right. production, like or it was just funnier. They had better bits, maybe is what I'm trying yeah. to say. And Giant Bomb, I don't know if they technically had. Bits, yeah, that's, they kind of just rift, yeah. yeah, which they're good at. They didn't, you know, what it probably was because usually the the giant bomb stuff is still them kind of talking about games that they played at PAX, like it's it's a live version of the cast basically, and there aren't a lot of games at PAX maybe that that they were playing like last time, that you know this is basically what we've been talking about up till which now. Which is something I have a thought about. Okay. I, I was pondering this on the way out of uh, the expo today. Um, so you guys went to the Bombcast because after the dark arts voice acting thing, I stayed to talk to the guy from uh, Church in Darkness. So you guys left and I didn't, again, not huge into it. Cards Against Humanity, I'm just burnt on, so I don't. it's not interesting to me. So I didn't hang out. And I I've would, never played the game. I just think that people. You've are you've funny. played the game. Trust oh, me. So you're right. Technically, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I went back to the back to Expo and I started. Wa- I just walked around. I, I I wasn't really mindlessly just wa- wandering, and uh, and the thing that I noticed today that I noticed yesterday that I'm gonna notice tomorrow and Monday, is that while at in the morning we saw just the flood of people, just just the mass of humanity, right. And it looked so big. And it was like, okay, this is what PAX is. Like, this is what we're used to seeing. You get upstairs, and it, it still felt really thin. Not just, not, not content-wise in, in this respect, but, but humanity-wise. Like, it is not as... Also probably content-wise. Well, you no, know, definitely, but I, I'm just... I'm, <laughs> okay, mm. okay. But usually it's nuts to butts in there. Like, you can't go anywhere. Even when there's tons of room. Yeah. I don't know what you're saying. I don't know why I agreed with it. <laughs> you know. I got excited because you know. nuts to butts is fun to say. Uh, but aliens. Oh. <laughs> there it is. You got it. Please continue. Oh. So I, as I'm wandering, wandering around, I'm realizing that all the lines are still the same lines of two hours here and two hours there. But because they're so... Because the, the content itself... Um, because there aren't so many big triple A games like huge things there, I realized that a huge what we're seeing is the migration for this year, probably in the next couple of years. Everything is, everybody's waiting in line for the VR stuff, and the VR stuff takes all friggin' day because you have to get up in the morning, you have to rush to whatever booth you want. There's only two hundred some tickets, taking six hundred, eight hundred people out of that out of the general. Um, floor that's that that doesn't seem like a lot but it does start to add up when you've got vr experiences all over the place that are like that and there's like five or six that are two you have to get there you're in a two-hour line to get signed up for it then you're in lines for hours waiting to do to use your ticket disagree adam sure circle gets the square (laughs) again I say go for Gilbert Gottfried. PAX is much more spread out this year. I'll give you that. I don't know if VR is necessarily making a dent. I think it's making crowds. a dent. I do. Oh, yeah. I legitimately think it's making a dent. All right, you would. I know. I not. Um, I'm not saying it's. And I'm not saying it's the single core reason. No, it's, it's just, a reason, it's, and it's. It is no, certainly a, a big. Factor. It's certainly a factor. Okay. All right. Agree, Adam. Yeah. X gets the square. Sorry, you lose. <laughs> Told you to go with Gottfried. <laughs> Told you to go with Gottfried. Goldberg. Um. 
Mm. 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 Yeah, no, one of the things I noticed, like, when I was on my way up to the Six Arms to go meet my friends for lunch, I stopped off in the annex and I'd use the washroom. I walked in there, and usually the annex the is... The washroom? F- yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the water closet? <laughs> hey, Dofna! <laughs> Woo! Was spot... Anywho, um, you know, most of the floors in there are, like, filled with, like, the magic stuff, the Dungeons and Dragons stuff, all that stuff. I walked in there, and the bottom floor is empty yeah. this year. Full like, of water closets. There's nothing there. <laughs> like, it's just crazy how many big open spaces there are at PAX this year. There, there, there are a ton. And it, it, one one of them that, that was brought up to us that was pointed out day one was handheld. Nintendo has, like, yeah. no presence, so handheld yeah. is, like, a barren wasteland, which is... Probably great for the, the 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 enforcers that work there. Sure, but they also don't have because they don't have so much stuff from Nintendo. They also they don't have enough bean bags. They don't have a lot of so they're they're kind of hamstrung too. But there's all sorts of space down there. I think what's probably making the biggest dent, and this was mentioned, I forget in what panel now, but I guess uh, Pax South has eclipsed. Yeah, they mentioned that really the eclipsed panel. in terms of attendance numbers. Wow. Uh, Pax Prime, I think even Pax East had more people than that's what they said than Pax West. Well, you know, now, now now people are, are, I guess with the spread out, this is that's what I, I'm saying. Like people got more you know, places to go. Well, and and it's closer for a lot of people. You don't have to travel across the country when you know Pax is going to be in your hometown or closer to you. We could even try South. Some your South would be closer to you, right? Uh, south would be. I'd prefer to go to east it's because a lot, I, I would prefer to go to east too. That'd be rad. Yeah. So then let's do that. Don't that's, you know, south is equidistant uh, to I don't see why. west for me because I go from California. Who, I go up as much as I would go. Who cares? Well, You're that's still, what I'm saying. For me, it doesn't make a difference. But if I go to east, yeah, the, the, no, I can't, there's cares? no way I can go to east. Why? It's a what? flight. What are we talking about? I don't know why you're having an issue with going to east. I don't know why we're even talking about this, because we're not doing it anytime soon. Have so. you spent money on your plane tickets before? Yes, I am. <laughs> I am aware. That's why I can't go to East. Well, that's... What, okay, fine. What are we learning? I didn't... That was not the exact reason I was expecting. Why I did you were just, say washroom? I, yeah. It's a water closet. Or a crapper. <laughs> Hey, so we did a lot more. That that's hey, we got all this the the stuff about what's not going on at Pax out of the way. So Shitter now from, small. from here <laughs> from here on out, we can just talk about games and stuff. Um, things that have looked interesting. Things that we might actually get to. We have two days left to to, to make a morning sprint. Um, Recore, I still want to try. Mm-hmm. Um, For Honor, I can kind of go either way. Star Trek Bridge Crew, I'm probably more interested in getting that's, on that list that is yeah. one yeah and are you you're a, you're a trek fan aren't you kind of yeah. yeah like that that's, but you played artemis right i haven't played artemis but i have a lot of friends who love artemis uh, you should you should play it uh, oh never mind <laughs> it's a pc game oh so a pc is like a computer yeah you can probably do it on your phone i mean it's exactly a computer so a computer is like a it's like a box okay with with one side is like only glass. Yeah, and then there's like. Have you ever seen TV before? It's like that. So a TV e- is like a a box. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. With some wires in it, <laughs> and there's glass. Have so, you ever seen a PC? So, so stick around. It's like a box. We're gonna do another cast tomorrow. Another cast the day after that. We might actually play. Some games we had planned on streaming again. The the equipment still isn't working, so, so the, we the, we, we may play we may play games. You won't see them. We will. So we could probably stream from the Xbox yes. with the built-in Twitch, but we got no audio feed. So um, we could probably put up an audio feed if we really wanted to in whatever. some stupid way. So hang out, love each other. Zero hit points. Mm. <laughs> Um, why is I'm the one that broke?